We begin with Hurricane Beryl. It has hit Jamaica with winds recorded of nearly 150 miles an hour, pummeling the island's south southern coast overnight. The death toll has risen to at least 10 across the Caribbean and is widely expected to rise, whilst almost 500 Jamaicans have been evacuated from flood-prone communities. Meanwhile, worried tourists flock to Cancun Airport, hoping to leave the Mexican resort town ahead of the arrival of Hurricane Beryl, which is expected to hit Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula on Thursday night. The vast Category 4 storm has left a trail of devastation as it barrels its way through the Caribbean. On one island, Union, 90% of homes have been destroyed or damaged. Our Central America correspondent, Will Grant, has this report. Having ripped off roofs and tossed aside homes as it tore through the Caribbean, Hurricane Beryl has now hit Jamaica. For days, the island's government has said that the storm's destructive force was not to be underestimated. The Beryl would lash the country with high sustained winds, strong gusts and heavy rain. They also warned of life-threatening storm surges too. And even within the first hours of the storm making landfall, streets in the capital Kingston began to flood damaging homes and businesses. An evacuation order for low-lying areas was put into place and the Prime Minister stressed that residents of at-risk communities should move to safer districts. We urge all Jamaicans to comply with notices to evacuate if and when they are issued. However, even without the issuance of notice, if you live in a low-lying area, an area historically prone to flooding and landslide, or if you live on the banks of a river or a gully, I implore you to evacuate to a shelter or to safer ground. The coming hours will reveal just how much damage Beryl has wrought in Jamaica, but other islands show the devastation it can cause. In Cariacou, off the coast of Grenada, entire communities have been left homeless, with buildings destroyed or rendered uninhabitable. In St Vincent and the Grenadines, Union Island was among the worst affected places in the Caribbean, receiving the full brunt of Beryl's power. Beryl is an unprecedented storm. None have formed as quickly or have intensified as fast in Atlantic hurricane history, and satellite pictures show it's not done yet. As the storm leaves Jamaica's territory, it will move towards the Mexican mainland. The tourist resort of Cancun is directly in its path. Just as people in Grenada, in St Vincent and the Grenadines and in Jamaica had prayed for the best as Beryl drew near, now Mexicans are crossing their fingers in the hope that this extraordinarily powerful storm begins to weaken before it reaches their communities too. Will Grant, BBC News, Mexico. Well, let's go live to Jamaica now. We can talk to Curtis Kitchen, who is there on holiday with his family. Curtis, welcome to BBC News. Whereabouts are you? We are at the Hilton Rose Hall, uh, just about 20 minutes or so east of Montego. And what's happening at the moment? Well, now, uh, thankfully, it sounds like things have quieted down. I uh, just stuck my head outside a few minutes ago and uh, it looked like we're down to just a breeze and maybe a couple of showers left, uh, certainly with the worst behind us at this point. So you're in a holiday resort with your wife and children. I mean, what, what were you told by, by the people running the, the resort to do? They just say hunker down? Essentially, yes. Uh, the communication has been fantastic for us since we got here. Uh, they've gone door to door or left written notices with each room uh, or put up signage around the uh, resort basically saying, uh, what, which services would be in effect, which maybe had been delayed until the storm was over, uh, to respect all or any or all curfews, uh, which activities would not be allowed, including going outside and, until the all clear was given. So uh, they've been very forthright, very transparent, and uh, I feel like they've done a very nice job communicating with everyone here on the on the resort. And and have you all been okay or worried? Your two children are they are they all right? They've been fine. Uh, they actually spent most of the day in the room and, and we went down. We were able to go downstairs and, and have meals at different times. And uh, I, I think, thankfully, they're just still young enough that they saw it. Uh, but we 
tried, my wife and I tried very hard to make it sound very calm and, and that we weren't that worried about things. And so I think they took our lead very well. Uh, they were fine, but yeah, you know, it, it sounded scary there for a little while, especially after about four o'clock our time until about seven or seven thirty or eight. Um, uh, there definitely was a low roar with the wind there for a little while, but just where we were, uh, on the resort, I think the way the wind was blowing, it just, we, we happened to luck out in terms of, feeling the effects even if it looked and sounded pretty scary yeah. there for a little while and and just quickly curtis when are you expected to head home of course the airport is closed currently your thoughts on 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 how how you might get home yeah uh we're we're actually not thinking about that quite yet we're here until we actually just got into town yesterday uh or arrived yesterday and we're here or scheduled to be here through through the weekend and leave on Monday. So hopefully that'll be enough time for any cleanup to happen and our travel not to be delayed. But uh, we certainly will be paying attention to that uh, going in the days forward. All right. Well, a slightly different holiday to what you were expecting, I'm sure. Curtis, thank you for talking to us on BBC News. Curtis Kitchen there.